but we actually start sitting up and you can put um, whichever leg, le oh, this is great, I can see everyone perfectly. Um, whichever leg lands in front, switch. So you're sitting up nice and tall, drawing the belly back. Everyone just bring your shoulders up by your ears as you breathe in. And then exhale, they slide down. Good, Bre good, Tracy. Breathing in, shoulders go up. Exhale, they release, slide down. Two more, I did this with my singing people yesterday. Everybody needed that. Exhale, release. And then one more, breathing in. Good, exhale, release. Let's just do, breathe in, rotate your head to the right. Exhale, release to center. Breathe in, rotate your head to the left. Exhale, release to center. Breathe in, rotate to the right. Exhale to center. Breathe in, rotate left. Exhale, center, nice. Breathe in, just bring the right arm just straight up. Look away from the right arm. And as you exhale, turn it and bring it out to the side and down to the center. Now bring the left arm straight up, look away from that arm. As you exhale, turn it from the forearm and the wrist and bring it down. Nice, sit up nice and tall. Breathe in, the right arm goes up, look away. And then as you exhale, rotate it from the wrist, you feel the shoulder turn just a little bit. And then the left, breathe in, look up, look away. I'm sorry, look away. And then exhale, rotate everything to the center. Switch feet so your other leg's in front, doesn't matter which one it is. Let's do easy lean back twists. So easy leaning back twists. Let's put the weight on the back hand. Nice. So I changed locations because I'm trying to find the nice lighting, which I don't have to keep turning on all kinds of lights. So this one is in our bedroom and I've got um, one, two, three, four windows in front of me, which is good. I think it's good. We'll see how it works. A couple more, just leaning back. And enjoy that little twist back. So you can do a little pause when you lean back and twist. And then lean back and twist a little pause. Just kind of ring things out a bit. One more time, each side with a little bit of a pause. Lean back onto that arm. Good, sit up nice and tall, nice job. This time you're gonna bring the right arm up, you're gonna look up, look up, and then as you exhale, rotate the arm and bring it down. Bring that arm across, whatever, it doesn't matter what your front leg is. Swing the other arm back, just lift up to do an easy twist. This is gonna concentrate on just wringing out your back. Take a nice breath into your chest, and then exhale to the center. Bring the left arm up, but look up this time. Stretch your larynx. And then as you bring the arm down out to the side, turn and bring it across your body, twisting in the other direction, lifting up to twist as always. Thinking about your back, the back muscles that you're twisting. Breathe into your heart center. And then exhale, release to the center. Everyone put your right leg in front. Put your right leg in front. Lean onto your left hand. Swing the right arm across the front of your chest with the palm turning up to the sky. It's kind of hard to see my hand, but it's turned up to the sky. And then from the shoulder joint, rotate and turn the arm in. Good. Walk the left hand out just a little bit. Walk your left hand out and then bend the elbow. Really nice, strong lean into the right side of your ribs, making sure you're drawing your belly back. Stay here. Turn your head and your chest towards your right inner elbow. Drop the left shoulder away from your ear, Tracy, by bending the elbow. Nice. Everyone breathe in, lift up, come on up. And then exhale, switch your legs so your left leg is in front. Lean onto that right hand. Swing the left arm across. You really feel your back body. Turn your palm up to the ceiling first. And then when you're ready, from the shoulder joint, you're going to turn it in. Walk the right hand out a little bit. Uh, draw your belly back. Leaning in, dropping that right shoulder. Martha, there you go. Breathe in and then come on up. Nice. Let's lie down with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Good. And then go ahead and put your hands onto your lower belly. And let's just practice low belly breathing. 
front and back. So you're going to inhale for a count of four through your nose. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Tracy. And then exhale with the mouth closed with the Ujjayi breath. Breathing in through your nose, into the lower belly if you can. And then as you exhale, close your mouth, tighten your larynx. Keep going, I gotta adjust my, my screen here. So you're just getting into that low belly breath. And that's really good for the, obviously, second chakra. Great, Janine, that's a great camera angle. Tracy, that was good. Good, nice, Martha. Breathing into that belly front and back and we're such good yogis here we've been doing this for such a while that you know enough to concentrate on that that's great everybody on your diaphragm and it's as we always talk about it's huge it's very thick muscle and while you're doing this for two more times just while you're at it flatten that lower back into the floor just make any kind of tail adjustments that you need to to flat, there you go, to flatten that lower back into the floor. So that diaphragm is huge and it's doing a tremendous amount to inhale and pull the energy, the air in, and then exhale, relax the energy. Good. Now take your hands and just relax them down by your side. Let's do the back stroke. You can do whichever arm you want. Just getting into the shoulder joints one more time in this direction. You know, your arms obviously move in all directions, but we're just doing the basic lifting up and back. And I like this because it gives me a minute to think about my lower back into the floor, second chakra specifically. It also gives me a minute when I reach back, you can pause to see if you can really stretch your side ribs. So when you're reaching back to do the back stretch, you can straighten your arm a little bit. We can variation on our theme. And then just really see if you can get a bit of a stretch into the side rib. That's it, Tracy, when you reach back. Nice, Martha. Good, just nice little pause there. Good, Janine. Just a little pause when you reach back and you can lengthen through the arm that's back. Just a little stretch. Knees are bent. We're not doing anything with the legs straight yet. Just a little pause there, yeah. And if the arm doesn't touch the floor, that's okay. No big deal. Nice. That's good. Excellent. And then bring both arms to your side. Let's go back to your pelvis for just one second. Second chakra. So let's rock it away from your chin, and then you rock it towards your chin. So this is a huge piece of machinery. You're just rocking the pelvis forward and away like it's a rocking chair. A giant piece of machinery that we have here that is the cradle of all that creative energy. So you're being, rocking this in a loving way, just very gently rocking, low by, lovingly rock that second chakra energy. You can keep drawing your belly back towards your spine and it's a bit of a bandha, which is good. It just gives a nice little power to this energy center. Just easy rocking forward and away. And then, like I said, it's this giant kind of position of the pelvis there. And we know, just keep rocking right below it, you have your femur bones, which is the house of the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the glutes are even uh, attached there, the inner thighs, all of that. So it's really kind of the epicenter for the next little move we're going to do. Let your pelvis come to stillness, interlace your fingers, flip your palms up to the ceiling, just stretch your forearms. Nice, now keep that lower back flat against the floor. Stretch your legs long on the mat, and then keep your fingers interlaced and reach the arms back towards the wall behind you. Really flex and point your toes, your ankles. You can do small circles. And then jump your brain back up to your back. See how you're above that L4 and L5, your middle back is arching off the floor. And that's okay, because we're kind of doing a little back bend here. Reach your arms back even more. Keep moving the ankles, flexing the feet. Nice, good. Now let the feet come to stillness, but flex your ankles so it's like you're standing. It's like you're standing on the floor. Keep pressing the arms back, stretching through your whole body. 
Imagine that you have a floor beneath your feet. Take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, pull your knees into your chest, left knee, left hand, right knee, right hand. And you see that arch is gone, small circles, just to massage your tailbone, your sacrum. Now the whole back is flat against the floor. Maybe even a little, you know, your tailbone is curving in and you know to go the other direction. So just concentrate for a second, again, on the femur bone, the quads, the hamstrings, all those big muscles there. All right, let the knees come to stillness. Bend your knees, put your feet flat on the floor, relax your hands down by your side. Just pick up your right leg a little bit. It's just kind of a lolling, a relaxed kick. And then rotate your ankle in. It's a lolling lift. And then rotate your ankle out. Go, go easy on that. Then do some flexing and pointing. And when you're flexing and pointing, notice the calf, calves and the shins. And there's two bones underneath there. The, oh boy, anatomy 101, tibia and fibia. And I don't remember which one is the bigger one, but I can look it up. All right, so just let your let, foot relax. Keep your leg in the air. Cup onto your knee with both hands. And then just do a little bend, and then a little straighten, crickety crack. And then when you straighten it, you're going to feel the hamstrings start to have a little stretch here. I've been walking the dogs uh, for psychotherapy, right? And a lot of walking or running like that uh, really works to, for me. It tightens my hamstrings. So I, I did some yoga, a little bit. It was mostly lying down on that and breathing, this whole thing. But I really was trying to stretch my hamstrings because I know, just a couple more here, uh, I know that that's where my tightness is. Cool, just place the right leg down, relax your hands down, then lollingly pick up your left leg, and then just start to rotate the ankle in. When you're doing this rotating in, even though it is your ankle, notice how your uh, shins and shins really work to do this, and your calves. So even though we're not doing the flex and point thing, they're still working to help you spin that ankle in, and then sp uh, spin the foot out. Just the foot, try not to get your leg involved here. Keep doing this, but everyone take a nice breath in. And then blow the air out. Good, and now flex some point. Now pay attention to the shins and the calves. And not to mention all the toe action that's going on here. Keep the leg where it is. Cup onto your knee, you can relax your ankle, and then just start to bend, uh, let the, whatever, bend, do the knee thing. Can't talk anymore. After I take a break from teaching yoga, I can remember how to talk again. And you're just bending and straightening it, being kind to the knee. And I learned this from my ballet teacher, Marcus, that he just said, you know, just putting folks' hands on either side of the knee is just to help to focus. And you can feel how it moves. You know, if your fingertips are on the inside and the outside, you feel how that knee moves. And for every one pound of your body, it puts seven pounds of weight onto your knee. That's another biggie I learned. For every one pound of your body, it's the equivalent of seven pounds on your knee. So I think that knee study is gonna be our thing this year. Again, just bend the knee, put the foot, down and then pull the knees into the chest, right knee, right hand, left knee, left hand. A little space so you can rock side to side, you know how to use your elbow to push yourself up or just kind of getting your mind to your back for a minute. Just really rock either side. That's a huge thing to think about in terms of the, the power. We always talk about, you know, your spine and all that stuff, but the knees just take so much wear and tear, nice. And then just come to stillness, bend your knees, put your feet flat on the floor, and then walk your knees together and your ankles together. And then just open the left knee out to the side and then bring it up to meet the right. Open the right out, just bear alternating uh, leg in Sukta Baddha Konasana, just alternating. And you'll feel that pelvis rock with the leg, and that's okay. 
you're not trying to grip that foundational uh, part of your body that we're thinking about today. You're just letting it roll with the roll with the punches, so to speak, and it's rolling, lolling side to side. And while you're doing that, just letting one leg open and then the other one, letting the pelvis loll from side to side, notice how, just jump, while you're doing this, jump your brain up to your intestines. And you can feel you're doing a twist, even though technically you're not doing the big Mondo twist that we do. So now that you know that, you can pause a bit, a bit when one knee falls out to the side, see if you can pick up the opposing hip a little bit and just do a little bit more of a twist and then bring it to center. Let the other knee fall out to the side, then pick up the hip a little bit so you get a bigger twist. So you're just bringing the knees up, let one fall to the side and then bigger twist. Bring the knees up, let the other one fall out to the side and bigger twist. Pick that hip up, Martha, there you go. And then just nice, so you get a little deeper twist. Excellent. And then bring the knees together and now place, make sure your hands are down on the floor by your side, palms down. And now let's do both knees falling side to side. You're reading my mind. Side to side. Oh. And just enjoying when the knees go to the side. Good, Tracy. That's it. Oh, yeah. Let the hip come up. Don't worry about it. Don't hold that pelvis in place, whatever you do. And then just to make it more fun, turn your head in opposition to your knees. So you can get the very top of your spine. So you're getting your whole spine going. Keep going. Good. All right, let everything come to stillness. Just make sure your knees are together, your ankles are together. Flatten your lower back into the floor, draw your belly back and pick your hips up slowly. And as you're picking your hips up, here come those quads, here come the glutes. And so we don't wanna squinch in your lower back. Think about that pelvis. You can even put your hands on your hips and just kind of encourage the pelvis to think about moving away from your chin. Just encourage it to think about moving away from your chin. Now keep your hips up. Think of that pelvis pulling away from your chin and stretch both arms up to the ceiling. You have your knees together, your ankles are together, so you're kind of having to work a little bit on the inner thigh action. Now, because you have your arms reaching up to the ceiling, just shimmy them a little bit so your weight gets really between the shoulder blades. Good, now lengthen your tailbone towards your heels and use your glutes and pick your hips up just half an inch. Just half an inch, not much. Now stay here, reach the arms back towards the wall behind you. They're not gonna touch the floor. You're gonna reach way through those side ribs. You could probably push your heels into the ground and lift your hips up even more. And notice how your chin is tucked into your chest. You can push your heels into the floor and lift your hips up a little bit more. So make sure the knees stay pressed together. Uh-oh, you gotta use your inner thighs. All of a sudden, you have to work a whole lot on your legs. Take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, bring the arms down, bring the hips down, release everything down, and pull your knees into your chest. Left knee, left hand, right knee, right hand. Cup onto your right knee with both hands. Flex your left ankle, stretch that left leg up to the ceiling and lengthen it all the way down to the floor. Just a nice little lower back stretch here. Draw the right knee up towards your chin. Make sure, uh, uh, Tracy, you're dropping your shoulders away from your ears. Yes, yeah, yeah, no gripping on your jaw. Good, nice and easy. Good, now stay here. Hold on to that knee with your left hand. Bring your right hand down to the floor, palm down in a T position. Pick up that right hip and go ahead and draw it across. Let's do the big Mondo stretch. So we've actually done quite a bit for your back already. It's, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. Pick up that right hip. Turn your head towards your right hand. Big stretch. We normally do this at the end of class, but everyone's advanced here and we did a nice enough warm up. So you should be good to go. Take a nice breath into your right side ribs. And as you exhale, roll back onto your back, let go, bend your knees, put both feet flat on the floor. Walk your feet to hip width apart. When you're ready, flatten your lower back into the floor, draw that belly back towards your spine, and then pick your hips up slowly. Pick them up slowly because you have much more space now to explore here. And notice if you're gripping in that lower back, 
And the mantra here, you can put your hands on your hips again and encourage your pelvis to go away from your chin and more towards your quads, more towards your heels, which we know you're going to use in a little bit. Now stay right here and then reach both arms up to the ceiling and shimmy around again so you really get that weight between the shoulder blades. Now press your heels into the floor and pick your hips up a little bit more. Pick your hips up a little bit more. Nice. Now stay here, reach the arms back towards the wall behind you. And this is gonna increase your back bend. So you don't touch the floor, you're really gonna reach and you see how your rib cage is gonna start to crowd your chin. Reach more through your wrists, Martha. Reach more through your wrists. There you go, more through your uh, triceps, Martha. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Nice, easy breathing. Now push your heels into the ground again and see if you can lift up even more. Now notice if you start to grip in your shoulders when you did that. If you did, relax your shoulders and then see if you can use that relaxation to reach back through your underarm pits. Reaching back more and more. Press your heels into the ground again. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, float yourself down. The arms are gonna come up to the ceiling and then they come down to the floor. Pull your knees into your chest, left knee, left hand, right knee, right hand. Cup onto your left knee this time. Flex the right foot, stretch the leg up to the ceiling first. We get your hamstrings and then lengthen the right leg all the way down to the floor. Dropping the shoulders uh, away from your neck. Good. Easy, pulling that leg in, good. So when you pull it in, you pull it up and in. So it's not just jamming it into your torso. You're trying to just kind of imagine from the strength of your hip joint, pick up the leg and pull it in. It's a tiny advanced move, but everyone here is very advanced, so we're good. Don't just jam it into your body. Try it with the hip strength, try to pick it up and then pull it in. I know everyone of you can do that. Hold on to the knee with your right hand. Stretch the left arm out to the side in a T position, and then pick up the hips and over you go. Look away from the left knee. It's a very uh, kind of Scarlett O'Hara moment. Oh, Tracy, oh, owie, owie, owie. Good, I can see that. So interesting when you, you see uh, so many different things looking on the screen here. Okay, you're breathing into the left side ribs, um, obviously. Make sure a nice, couple nice full breaths. Cool. And then just roll back onto your back. Bend your knees, put your feet flat on the floor. This time walk your feet as wide as the mat. Walk your feet as wide as the mat. Flatten your lower back into the floor. Press your palms into the ground by your side and then pick your hips up again. Pick them up again. And you have all of this space and you're thinking about cupping onto the pelvis with your hands. You're just encouraging it like, a, like a, a, an accordion, your ribs, to open up so that pelvis is going away from your chin and towards your heels. Reach both arms up to the ceiling. Shimmy them around so you really get between the shoulder blades. Press your heels into the floor to pick your hips up more and more and more. Bring the pubic bone up towards the new moon. So you're like, there's a puppet string that's drawing your belly button all the way up towards the new moon. Reach the arms back towards the wall behind you. Reach the arms way back. And you're lifting equally, Janine, with the right and the left hip. So you're not favoring one leg or the other. Both heels are pressing. Really use your quadriceps. Don't let the knees fall out. You're consciously using your inner thighs to keep the legs parallel. Lift the chest up more towards your chin. That's gonna allow you to reach with your underarms more and more and more back towards the wall behind you. Everyone take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, float everything down. Arms come down by your sides. Excellent job. And let's go ahead and come on to all fours, whichever way you need to. Excellent. And let's go ahead and curl your toes under. 
And let's do the basic cat and cow, a basic. But the theme here as you're going into a uh, cow is that you're not tightening in that lower back. You're thinking about stretching your chest forward and stretching your tailbone back. This is the, the move that everybody and their cousin does. And I didn't do it for a while because I wasn't doing it right. Because I was skinching in my lower back. And you want to think about the chest rolling forward and the lower back rolling away. And this, you know, toes curled under is just to stretch your feet. That's all it is. Excellent. A couple more. Really get into that whole back. Nice. And with new information, bring yourself to table, flatten your feet. And then release back to regular extended child's pose. No big deal. No big deal. Walk the hands like a panther forward. Make sure the fingers are all spread out so you get underneath the wings of your shoulder blades. Your belly is still drawing back towards your spine. So now your pelvis is kind of in this bunched up position, but the back part of it, your lower back, your tailbone, is open. So this is the chance to breathe on there. You don't have any weight on the back, really, kind of. So that's your opportunity to do a lower back breathing, lower back breathing. Nice, keep your feet flat. When you're ready, bring yourself up again. Come down to your forearms, let's do the karate chop thing. And you know the purpose of that is to rotate the shoulders. That, that's all it is. And then when you're ready, you bring yourself back. And then lean back. And if you can get those elbows off of the floor, that's a bonus thing. Nice. Yes. Good, Janine. And that flattens the uh, nice, Martha. And make sure you're breathing. Martha, I can see you're breathing from here. That's great. Um, you know, it just flattens those shoulder blades there. And it's really making you uh, think about, uh, again, the lower back breathing. But you can get much higher into your back here because you've got so much open space now. Really concentrate. There's energy in your fingers. Good. Draw your belly back towards your spine. Stay here, but flatten your hands into the floor. Walk your hands over to the right. Walk them over to the right. And then you just relax your right shoulder down and you know that it's all about the left side. Drop that left hip more and more and more towards the outside of your left foot. And boy, that should be talking to your side ribs. You're breathing into your left side, letting that left hip get heavy and heavier. This is really hard if, you, if you're working it the right way. You could probably tell me which one of your ribs is feeling it. Walk your hands back to the middle. It's a long time to be in this position, so I just went to the other side. And then walk your arms over to the left. Relax the left elbow down, keep walking that right arm forward, and then dropping with your mind, it's a tiny move, dropping that right hip down towards your right outer heel. It's, but don't lose the fingers, okay? Thumb, uh, thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, Martha. Connect that. Breathing into the right side, letting that right hip get heavier and heavier and heavier. Cool, walk your hands back to the middle, come up onto all fours. Nice. Go ahead and curl your left toes under behind you. Stay strong in the left arm and the left shoulder. Draw your belly back. When you're ready, pick up that left leg so it's parallel to the floor. And then when you're ready, extend the right arm by your ear for a nice strong bird dog. Pressing that left heel away from your pelvis. Reaching that right arm away from your belly button. So you're drawing a line from that right arm across your upper chest, through your belly button, all the way down the front of the left hip. You can probably stretch even more now that I just said that. You can lengthen through your knees. Remember how you stretched out your knees? Take a beautiful breath in. And as you exhale, just place that left leg down, place the right hand down. Get yourself even on both arms and both knees. Curl your right toes under, press and flex those back. Stay strong in your belly. 
Stay strong in your belly. Start to put the weight on the right hand. And then when you feel like you've got that weight on your right hand, pick up the right leg. And then when you feel like you have your balance, stretch the left arm by your ear. Only then, whoops, Martha. <laughs> Good. And then you're, yeah, yeah, I'm watching. Length, that's it, Martha. Thank you. And uh, yeah, Janine, that's it. That's it, Janine. Uh, Janine, can you lengthen underneath that uh, right underarm a little? Yes, good. I powered you out a whole lot back. Everyone can breathe into the front of that hip that's in the air. And I bet you, Tracy, you can press it back a little bit more if you relax in the front of that. There. Oh, look at that. Everyone breathe in, put their hand down, and then release back to regular child's pose. Stack your fists. Nice job. Good. We're all going to be a whole uh, three inches taller after this one. Cool. We have one more in this position, and then we're going to move. <clears throat> okay, bring yourself up. <clears throat> you have your, uh, bring your knees as wide as the mat and the toes together. And let's do, just watch your lower back on this one. Just do that thing where you walk forward onto your forearms. Just let the pelvis drop forward. And then you just can walk back on your forearms, back to frog. And then you kind of crawl forward again. Just be very careful. It should feel really nice on the, um, Hip joints and you know it's on your knees too actually but just notice when you're doing this when we do child's pose everything is tucked nicely into that pelvic line and here you're kind of forcing this little external rotation of the hip joint so it's a real good stretch yay martha good keep going i'm just watching here tracy oh there you go oh okay nice good Jean. you got it yeah, <laughs> Tracy, I'm watching Tracy kind of oh, get herself back. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay, good, cool. All right, nice. And then just stay on your forearms and bring your knees back under your hips. Interlace your fingers. Make sure you press your wrists into the ground. Make sure you have your uh, elbows in. All right, don't let the elbows splay out. And then rotate your chest so your chest slightly balances nicely over your forearms, your forearms, not your forearms, your forearms. Curl your left toes under, stretch the left leg back. Strong in the belly, press the wrist into the ground, pump up those shoulders and those arms, stretch the right leg back, bring the legs together for a narrow plank. You're pressing your heels back towards the back of the room. Now, no one is picking their hips up higher than their shoulders. Look at these planks. These are wonderful. Yes, Tracy, I know you're still there. I just gotta look. Okay, so this is good. This is really, really nice. Now from here, walk your feet in, pick your hips up for dolphin pose. So you gotta walk your feet in, keep your feet together. It's a narrow dolphin. You gotta stay strong in your belly. Drop the heels down so you stretch those calves that we talked about. Make sure you're feeling the whole weight on your forearms and your wrists. Bring the knees down, release back the child's pose, whichever way you want. Cool. Come on up and go onto your right side, come onto your right forearm and stack your knees. Place your left hand onto your hips, flatten your uh, right hand into the floor, stay strong in the core, and then when you're ready, pump up that arm and then pick up your hips up off the floor for a bent knee side plank, bent knee side plank. Stretch your left arm up to the ceiling as you look up. Good, take a nice breath in, keep your hips lifted, but try and thread that left hand underneath your right underarm, slowly stay here. You're trying to thread it, but you really can't go very far. Breathe in, reach the left arm up to the ceiling, lift the chest way up, Tracy, way up, Martha. Good, one more time, thread it through. It's hard to keep those hips lifted. Thread it through, stay here, trying to thread it through. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And then press it up to the ceiling, all the way up, and then release the hips down. Good, and swing over to the other side. Coming down to that left forearm, stacking your knees. 
Get that arm under your shoulder, pump it way up, pump it way up. And then when you're ready, you feel like you have a solid foundational base, then pick the hips up. Nice and easy. This is the easy part. This is where you start and you're like, this is, I could, I could have coffee. Reach the right arm all the way up. Nice lifting of that upper chest. Uh, Tracy, a little more length in your front chest, in your neck. There you go. And then thread the arm through. Pause here. You're still picking up the hips. And then unfurl it. Keep the hips lifting. You're reaching the right arm up. Really proud chest, Martha. Proud chest. Proud to be a yogi. And then reach it all the way through again. This is my strong side. So this is, for me, it's like a walk in the park, kind of. And then reach the right arm all the way up. Working hard. And then release the hips down. Come on up to sit. All right, sweaty, good, nice work. All right, so let's go ahead and bring the feet <clears throat> to the floor. Sitting up extremely proud and tall. Yep, here we go, good job, Martha, nice. So we're going to just put your hands behind your knees and use the power of your arms to pull your chest towards your upper legs. And you're strong in the belly because that's really important in this whole thing. So you have that pelvis that we talked about, the center of creativity. You have your shoulders dropping away from your ears, Tracy. You have your chest, like you, you Martha, beautiful. That uh, Janine, and roll your shoulders back, Janine, just a little bit. That's it. Lift the chest up towards your chin. Nice, good positioning. Yeah, Tracy, help yourself if you need to. All right. Now try not to rock back too much. Pick up the left leg and pick up the right leg. It's really hard. You gotta go in and rock back, but it's tough. But we are gonna rock back, but try not to rock back too much. Nice. And now pick your ankles up a little bit more. Pick your ankles up. Thank you, Janine. Good. Now roll your chest. Your shoulders are back. Roll your chest. Try to get your chest a little closer to your legs by pulling your legs up a little bit more. Now stay right here. Reach the arms between the legs. Try not to lean back too much. Nice and strong in the core. This is absolutely lovely. Take a beautiful breath in. And then as you relax the legs down, bring your chest forward. Just easy relax. Forward, that's the last one on the floor. Good. You just have three standing ones. Let's go ahead and bring yourself on up to stand. Fix your outfit. Cool. And let's step the right leg in front, left leg in back. We're going to do triangle into reverse warrior. All right, so just set your feet up. I got Tracy's feet. Now I got Tracy's whole body. Good. Excellent. Right leg's in front, left leg's in back. Hands are in the hip joints. Just be very conscious, thank you, Janine. Just be very conscious that you're not gripping anywhere, that we're lifting up and out of everything. So hands are in the hip joints, you're gonna rotate your pelvis, so turn it consciously towards your right leg. And then, not just your shoulders, hands are in the pelvis, turn your pelvis away. Okay, now turn it back towards the right leg. So we're just spinning on the axis of your pelvis, just keep going. Just see if you can notice, and you know, notice first of all, when your shoulders kick in, because so many times in class when we were live, I would see everyone instigate this with shoulders, and we, we talked about that before. And so yes, the shoulder girdle is moving, but we wanna have the ability to move that pelvis, the flexibility in our hip joints and the strength that we've been working on is really going to inform how you're doing this movement. So just go ahead and let the pelvis turn towards your right leg. So that's the rotation that we want for now. Stretch the right arm all the way up to the ceiling. You should be warmed up and, and ready to go. That right arm goes straight. That's beautiful, Janine. Pick up the upper chest, Janine. Drop the left shoulder, Janine, down a little bit. Just get a little back bend. Reach the arm back a little bit. Reach the arm back, nice. 
Lift up out of that pelvis, Martha. Up and up. That's it. Good. Now here we go. Lean forward. Bring the arm all the way forward. You should feel your hamstrings as you bring that right hand. We're warmed up, so bring that right hand down to wherever you want. If you want to go down to the floor. We have not turned your pelvis yet. You have your left hand on your hip. Your pelvis is still facing your right foot, and you're pressing down with the ball of the right foot. Now roll the left shoulder back. Now turn your pelvis. Go from the pelvis, not the shoulders. Turn from the pelvis, not the shoulders. That's beautiful, Janine. And then stretch the left arm. That was really good. Reach the left arm all the way up. You're turning from the pelvis too. It's not just your back. Pick your chest up more towards your chin, Martha. That's lovely. Martha, more strength in that left arm up to the sky. Good, Tracy. More power in your back leg. Tracy, press down with the outside of the back foot. Good, now everyone come on up to stand. Now hands go right into your pelvis, turn your body back towards the right leg. Turn the pelvis back towards the right leg. Bend the right knee, bending in the right knee. So the tendency here, and I see Tracy kind of falling into it, is that you're gonna to try to lean forward. But we know, walk your back leg back a little bit, maybe that'll help you. We know that from weights class, that there's a difference when you have your pelvis coming forward, or your chest coming forward, and your chest going straight up. So as much as you can, try to keep that chest going straight up as you bend in the front knee more and more. Walk more distance between your feet. You're still facing the right leg. Straighten your spine up and out of your pelvis even more. Now, turn your pelvis away from the front knee. Turn your shoulders away from the front knee. Nice, and now and only now, you bring the arms out parallel to the floor, turn and look over the right arm, drop the shoulders, Janine, away from your neck. Keep that front knee bent. From the right shoulder joint, turn the palm up to the ceiling. Remember how we started sitting down? And you were turning the arms and looking, turning your head. And now, lift it up all the way up as you reverse warrior, slowly reaching through the right ribs, reaching that left arm back, Martha, you can drop in that front knee even more. You have a whole bunch more. Good. You have walk that back leg back even more. Yes. Lift up nice and strong, Janine. Good. Breathe in. And then exhale. Come on up. Turn your feet parallel so the pelvis is facing forward. Hands on the hip joints. No gripping. Just with an extension. Bring your weight forward and over. Nice and forward. Nice. Yeah. Oh, hooray. And then just place the hands down, easy, wide-legged, forward, fold. Okay, you know to put the weight on your toes. You know to draw your belly back, put your hands into the hip joints, and with a flat back, bring yourself up. Good. We will do the other side, but let's give everything a break. So heel, toe, everything in. Bring the legs together, yeah. Nice. Hold on to your right wrist with your left hand. Bring it all the way up. Good, strong in the belly, leaning over to the, whichever way this is, I have no idea. No idea what I just said. But whichever arm you're holding on to, which I think is your right arm, um, yeah, because everyone's in opposition to me. Um, what was I gonna say? Press down with the outside of that foot, and that's really gonna help you lift up out of your pelvis even more. So if you press down with the outside of the right foot, you're gonna feel that breathe in, and then exhale, relax the arms down. Hold on to your left wrist, bring it all the way up. Nice. Lifting up and out of your pelvis, lean over to the right. Press down with the outside of the left foot. That's it, you should really feel that one. Your legs are powerful. You're pressing into the floor. You're, the floor is your kind of uh, yoga teacher, pressing into the bottoms of your feet. And that gives you the energy to lift up a little bit more, lift up a little bit more, lift up a little bit more, breathe in. And then exhale, come on back to the center. Bring your feet back to that wide position. Put your left leg in front or whatever, go the other way, whichever way your other way is. Good, so left leg is in front, nice. Hands are into the pelvic part. We're going to practice just on this side, turning away and towards the front leg, noticing when the shoulders kick in. At a certain point, you know, your pelvis kind of stops. 
and that's mostly like the tendons and all of that. Muscles are tight, so they're not letting you go in a complete rotation. So the shoulders and everything kind of come into play at a certain point in your back. And you're just noticing all what that is. Easy does it. Easy getting, warming it up before you go into the dramatic thing. Let's do one more, just rotating around, noticing. You can go deep into that hip rotation. And then bring yourself to the front. Everyone walk your back foot back a little bit. Jeanine, I can't quite see your feet, but okay. Martha, I can't see either. Now turn towards that left leg and you're turning with your pelvis, right? You're not turning with your shoulders. Lifting up and out of your pelvis. Press down with the outside of that back foot. Press down with the outside of that back foot. Here comes the back bend. Stretch the left arm all the way up. Now inform that back bend by lifting your rib cage up and swinging that left arm, yes, and we're staying strong in the belly. We're still pressing down with the outside of the back foot, Martha. That's gonna help you spin that leg away from your ear. Nice and strong, here we go. Leaning forward, enjoy the trip. You turn your pelvis towards the left leg. You're turning your pelvis towards the left leg. You bring that hand down to wherever you want. Press down with the ball of the left toe, and then when you're ready, Turn your pelvis away. Make the movement happen from the pelvis. It's harder. And then you can swing your shoulders. Martha, that's good. And then stretch the right arm all the way up. So the movement this week is coming from the pelvis. Nice, Janine. Janine, good. Lengthen to the back of your neck. Now think of Janine, the tailbone going towards the, looks like there's a window behind you. Maybe press down with the outside of the back foot. And then see if you can, that's it. And then can you let, that's it, Janine, that's beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Nice, Martha. Tracy, that's beautiful. Tracy, energy in that hand that's by your foot. Lengthen that arm, that ha. Everyone breathe in. Now we're gonna come on up. Bring your hands back down to the hip joints. Turn, make sure you turn your pelvis back towards the left leg. Now walk that leg back. This is where we said we're not gonna lean forward. You're gonna bend that left knee Walk it forward if you need to, so you come straight down. And as much as you can, you're trying to turn towards that left leg, but not with your shoulders. You're trying to do it with the whole pelvis. The whole pelvis. Good, and apparently my cat is trying to bring her animal in right now. All right, good. And then from here, go ahead and turn your pelvis away from that front knee. Turn the whole thing away. And then when you're ready, you bring the wings of the arms parallel to the floor, dropping the shoulders away from the ears, bend in that front knee, Martha, more straight down, a little less forward, more straight down. Go deep, Martha, dig deep, dig deep, dig deep, dip, dip, dip. drop the shoulders away from your ears, Tracy. Good, Janine, drop your shoulders, Janine. Nice, and then think of that left shoulder joint. As you rotate the arm, you're gonna reach it up, reverse warrior, nice, here's the back bend. Pelvis is still going straight down, not back. Straight down, straight down to me a little deeper. Drop a little bit more, Janine. Good, everyone take a nice breath in. As you exhale, come on up, turn the feet to parallel. Hands in the hip joints. Remember you're going forward, forward, and then down, yeah, good job, nice, perfect. Put your weight on your toes, tuck your hands into the hip joints, flat back, up you go. And then take the time to enjoy the rotating in, heel toe in. Excellent. And let's come on down to the floor. And, um, Okay, let's see how I can turn so you can see this. We've done this before. Um, so it's gonna be just in motion and, and you're just gonna enjoy the stretches. So you're gonna go into reverse table. So I'll just show you. So you do reverse table and then you bring yourself down and then just easy into lengthen forward fold. So just go ahead and do that at your own speed. You're just gonna do six of them. 
but you're noticing how you're rotating the shoulders back, placing the feet, lifting the weight of the pelvis up. So that's a stretch, your side ribs, and then you get to float yourself down. And then you can alternate whichever leg comes in front. So it's kind of action into inaction. Yeah, good. So keep going, I'm watching right there. Yep, so explore. And when you lift it, you're exploring the amount of space you have. Yeah, Martha, if you, yeah, you can drop your head back, but just keep your eyes looking down towards your nose. And yes, good. And then you just relax when you come forward. Good. So you probably got like about four more of those. Can't really see Janine. Yeah, Tracy, just pick up. Good. Janine, unfortunately, don't move your camera, but I'm trusting you're, you're exploring the space. I'm just seeing the top of your head here. Nice, Martha. Good. And everyone's breathing. And when you do that relaxation thing, um, you know, you can take the time to breathe into your back. It's really important that we practice breathing into our back. Good. Plant the nice, Tracy, think of those feet. Good. Yeah, good job, Martha. Very good. Yeah, Janine. I'll just say very good because I see your little head every once in a while. Good, Martha. Plant those feet. Consciously lift. Think of those. Uh, oh, Martha, that's great. I got nothing. <laughs> for, one, <laughs> for once, I got nothing. Good. Just one more, everybody. Nice, Tracy. Good, good, good. Yeah, Tracy. Watch that lower back a little bit. Yes, good. One more. And then after you've done your one more, you can just relax in that resting pose. Yep. Yeah. Easy does it. Breathing into your back. It's okay if you round your back, doesn't matter. Uh, but while you're here, just remember to think of that belly going back towards your spine, just again to uh, guard that. Bring yourself up, shift the position so you bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana, drawing onto the heels. Bring your hands to the balls of the toes and then turn like you're opening a book and that's gonna rotate the legs out. Stay strong in your belly. This time with a flat back, you can let the feet come together. With a flat back, just bring yourself slowly forward. Like you're trying to draw, you should feel your inner thighs trying to draw your belly button towards your heels. My arms are actually working quite a bit here. Stay here, just lift up so you're sitting up straight. Put your weight onto your right hand, just lean onto that right hand. Take your left hand, turn it so it's on the inside and then just press that leg down and away, the left leg down and away. Got my right hand on the floor behind me. And Tracy, you can probably walk that hand closer to your knee. Yeah, and then just press it down and away. Come on up, let's do the other side. We'll put the left hand down, turn the right hand. If it's, uh, I don't know, yeah, actually, Tracy, that's a good point. Everyone can play around with it. I, you know, Barbara always was like, make sure it's just right uh, about five inches above their knee. We can play with that. You can move the hand up a little. It's just different. Like, I think I still like it five inches or so above the knee. Barbara's doing an online class today, but I gotta miss it. I should give you guys the link. You know what, I will so you can meet her. She does um, twice a month an online class, and then you would, get, you would absolutely learn a lot from her. I'll send you guys the link. I, I, don't, I think it's like $18 a class though, but it's worth it. You can do it like once. 
and check her out. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and, and uh, lie down with your knees bent, feet are flat on the floor. Thank you, Janine. And then bring your arms to, like, I call them cactus arms. That's just where they're, like, you're like a cactus. And then bring the uh, feet together and just do the side to side, similar to what we did at the beginning. Nice and easy. And um, what this does with your arms in this position, it when your knees fall to the side, believe it or not, it actually pulls on your biceps a little bit, which is kind of weird, but. It's all connected. Just do one more with the legs together. And then after you've done that, keep the arms exactly where they are. Make sure your lower back is flat into the floor and then walk your feet to hip width apart. And then with the cactus arms, same thing, go side to side. Just noticing how it stretches your biceps of all things, it does. And really try to pick your hips up when you go to the side. So you're really going to pause for a second when you fall to the side now. And you're going to feel it in your quadriceps too. So when you go to the side, just pause, try to pick up the opposing hip, of, the hip that's farthest away from the knees. And I think it's because you have to push your feet into the ground that your quads are going to have to work a little bit. That's probably what it is. But just pause when you go and then go to the side. Again, push the foot into the ground so you can really get the quads to work, the front of that hip, oh, you know, has to work a little bit, and then go the other way. So that pause is an opportunity to, to use the floor a little bit. And then again, your bicep should be just like fluttering along a little bit. There's one more on each side. Using the floor as a resistance, as a coach, as a guide. I'm doing one more on this side. Cool. And then bring the knees back to center. Bring your arms back down by your side. Make sure you just flatten your uh, lower back into the floor. Now pick up your head, interlace your fingers behind the back of your head, and just pick up your head so you tuck your chin into your throat, stretching the very top of your spine. Try not to arch in that back again. I know I just did, that's why I'm telling you not do it. And then when you do that, relax your jaw and your tongue and your front of your throat. You can probably lengthen your neck a little bit and move your head a little bit. And gently release your head down. Go easy. Float the hands down to the ground. If your back is tender, you know, you all know, you can walk your feet apart, let the knees fall together. But if you're feeling you're good, just flatten the legs for traditional Shavasana. From the shoulder joints, turn the hands of the palms face up towards the upper energies. Full body breathing, even your skin is breathing. Relaxing the jaw and the teeth. Just 
whenever you feel that your energy is creeping up towards your brain, you know, and doing all the thinking and projecting and all that stuff, because we spent so much time talking about the bowl of the belly, see if you can turn your brain back to more grounding energy, creative energy. It's really important this week that we just make sure we stay grounded through everything. And the last little image I'll give you is that supporting energy of the earth, that you're not walking over it, you're walking with it. And so if you need to just kind of get grounded again or, to, or standing in the grocery store or whatever, I did this a lot in the last couple of weeks, you just think about how the earth is responding to you. It's not a one-way conversation where you're pounding away, you're having a two-way conversation and it's there to support you and send you fiery, positive, warm energy. And keeping the fingertips of your awareness on that constant support, you're just going to let your head rock side to side. You can open your eyes at this point. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And you're going to pick a side, any side, roll onto that side, you know, to keep an arm under your head and the other hand touching the floor. And to come up, you straighten that top leg and you push your hand into the ground. Bring yourself on up to sit. And let's make the triangle with your hands and then bring it down to the second chakra. Breathing front and back. Two more breaths here. And bringing that energy together to the prayer mudra to celebrate the light that is within you and the light that is within all beings and all things. We'll transition out of our practice this morning with a beautiful om. Take a nice breath in. Oh, I'll say thank you all so much. Thank you.